Yes, I am finally getting round to making part three for the VFD spindle video. Now, just to recap, at the end of part two, after we'd wired everything and got it all set up, I was hitting an issue where I wasn't getting the full range of RPM from the spindle. I think it was about 80, 90%. Now, I said I'd do a part three, and that is what we are covering today. I want to tell you about the issue I had and the solution for it, and then I'm going to move on to two crucial points that anybody with a VFD spindle setup need to know before they start working with it. Ultimately, about getting your spindle warmed up and putting pauses in your job to bring the speeds up to the correct settings before you start cutting. But first, let's begin with the original issue that I had and the solution for it. Now I'm going to start by saying the same thing I said on the previous two episodes. I am not an electrician, I am not an expert. I just document what I am doing and hope it may help others and maybe give some pointers or advice along the way. Now we have three things in front of me here. We have the spindle, we have the VFD that powers the spindle and we have this little circuit board right here. Now this circuit board essentially converts the voltage and allows your control board to talk to the VFD unit. And this is what was causing the problem, not the board itself but the amount of power needed to run this board. Now I was talking to people who were doing the exact same setup as me just on a different CNC machine and theirs was working so I couldn't understand what the issue was. I was making the assumption that the voltage output from the PWM was enough to power this and in theory from the specs it should have been but one day I decided just to plug a 12 volt supply directly into this board and test it and everything worked. It was just that simple. This wasn't getting enough juice to allow it to run how it should have been. Now, when I talk about a 12 volt supply, this was just literally a very cheap plug in the wall. I think it was a one or two amp plug supply. And ultimately, as I say, it solved the problem and did exactly what I needed. So if you're having the same issue as me and you're not hitting the full RPM, it may just be that the little board converting the voltage isn't getting enough juice to do its job. Now I just mentioned about using external power supply to run that PWM converter. Now it is always worth checking whether your control board has some sort of additional power output. For example, they may have auxiliary ports to run a light, a fan, maybe even a water pump. As long as one of those outputs is giving it enough power to run that PWM converter, it is much more efficient to wire it directly into your control board than using an external supply like I did. Obviously, if it doesn't have those outputs, don't worry, the external supply will still work. So let's move on and talk about the two essential things that anybody with a VFD and spindle setup should be doing, which is essentially warming things up and making sure it gets up to the correct speed. Now, as you can see, there's a bit of a problem. I have wires everywhere at the moment. This has been sitting in a box for over a year and it's such a waste doing nothing. So I'm gonna get rid of the Makita router in my long mill, drop this in, and then I'll talk to you about those warm-up procedures. So it took a little bit of work pouring all the wiring through the drag chains, getting everything connected up correctly, but ultimately everything is now in place with the spindle mounted and everything connected. Now, I mentioned earlier about using a connection off your control board in order to run your PWM converter. Now, if you have a super long board, maybe for the long mill or the alt mill, this is ideal because they have a couple of dedicated auxiliary power outputs that is perfect for running something like that PWM chip and that is exactly what I have done for my setup. But let's move on and talk about the two key things I highlighted that you need to do whenever you are running a VFD spindle setup. Now those of you coming from using a DC spindle or a router, you're very used to just turning them on them, getting up to speed quickly and you get cutting. Now you need to be a bit more careful and delicate when running one of these spindles. Think of it a bit more like a car engine. You need to bring them up to temperature before you really start using them. Essentially, you need to warm them up. Now when I talk about warming them up, it basically means running it at a low RPM for a couple of minutes, increasing that RPM speed for a few more minutes and so on until you bring it up to a working temperature. So for example, you may start this up at 5,000 RPM, let it run for two minutes, then bring it up to 10,000 RPM, let it run for another couple of minutes, and then maybe up to 15,000 RPM, and so on. Now what I would say is you wanna warm these up probably for at least five minutes to 10 minutes, depending on how cold the actual spindle is before you start. Obviously, if you're doing multiple cuts in the same day, then your spindle probably is already up to temperature. But if you're coming into the workshop like the following day, a week later, then it's essentially going to be a cold spindle and you'll need to do a warm-up process with it. 
Now, how do we do a warm up process? Well, it can vary depending on what control software you are using, but it is relatively easy on most. Now, probably the easiest method is if your control software has the facility to turn the spindle on and off with the click of a button and maybe a speed um, slider scale, then just do it with that. Turn it on at maybe 5,000 RPM, as I said, leave it a while, slide that up to 10,000, so on, and work through the scale. Now, you can also do this by typing in commands, which is also very easy, and I suppose a nice, easy way just to learn a few basics. Now, to start this up, basically, it is the command that is M3, and tell it how fast to spin, it is S followed by the value. So in this scenario, if we wanted to run it at 5,000 RPM, we would go M3 for turn on, followed by S5000, hit enter, and that would start this up at 5000 RPM. And then when we're ready to move on to the 10,000 RPM range, we would just type S10,000, hit enter, and it would bump it up to that speed, and so on until you've done your warm up process. Now, some of you will be thinking, well, I don't really wanna stand there for 10 minutes, keep increasing the speed of this with nothing else to do. Is there an automated way to do it? Well, yes, there is. You can create this into a program, where you basically run it like almost you would a normal job on your CNC, and it will go start at this speed, run for two minutes, then move on to this speed for another two minutes and so on until you've completed your warm up process. Now, I will put a link in the description area to a very basic file running from zero to 24,000 RPM in terms of warming your spindle up that you can follow. But ultimately the way this works is it's the same commands we were just using. There are just pause gaps in between that basically say, wait for two minutes, then move on. Now, this moves me on very conveniently to the next point that I need to cover. And I'm gonna teach you how to do those pauses. Now, the reason that this is very important is not just for the warm-up, but your spindle will take longer to get to its operating speed than something like a router. So if you went to start your job, your machine would just jog over to the start position and it will probably start to go cutting before this has actually got up to speed because of the acceleration needed within it. So what we need to tell the machine to do when we start a job is to turn the motor on but actually pause for something like five seconds to let this get up to speed before it begins to move. Now setting one of these pause commands up is really easy and I know some people don't like messing about with codes but this is one of the easiest commands that you can learn how to use. Now I'm about to show you how to edit an existing file to put the pause command in. Then we're going to go one step further and I can show you how to edit your post processors so it does it automatically whenever you export a file. Now what you need to do is find one of your existing G-code files and just open it up in something like Note. Pad. This allows you the ability to be able to edit the text within it. Then you go down to where the command is that we have just discussed. So it may be like M3 S10,000. It may be the opposite way around. It may be like S10,000 and then the M3 the other side. Either way, that is the com com command we're after for starting the spindle up. Now when you find that point within your code, it's normally about five or six lines down. Just hit return and put an extra line after it. Now the code to put a pause in is G4. So we type in G4, then we're gonna press a space and put a P and then you an enter how many seconds you want it to be delayed for. So in this scenario, we want maybe a five second warm up. So we're going to press five. So the command we've just put in is G4 space P5. And that basically means pause for five seconds before carrying on. So in the order that things now run, it will tell the spindle to start up. It will then say pause for five seconds before moving. Hopefully at that point, your spindle is then up to speed and it'll continue on to do the job that we need it to do. And just to prove it, that G-code file that we edited to put the five second delay in, I have now loaded into my control software. We're going to click run what you should see. It's gonna lift up slightly for the safety movement. It's gonna start the spindle up and wait five seconds before it moves over to its start position. Now I should say I'm running this in thin air. There is no bit in it. It's just to prove that the process works. So let's click start job and see what happens.
it really is that simple. Now, I just said to you about doing this in your post processors to do it automatically. Now, I'm going to show you obviously in the Carveco post processors, but it does apply to other things like Vectric as well. But as I say, it is still very simple to do. So what you will need to do is head to your post processor file. Now, if you are a Carveco user, this is under your C drive, program files, Carveco, and then there's a folder called post P. Now in that folder, it does contain all of the different post processors for your particular um, machine or for Carveco, I should say. Now what you want to do is scroll down until you find the post processor that you are used to using. So in this scenario, I always use the Gerbil Millimeter one. Now what I'm going to do is take a copy of that, go and control C, control V, and it's going to paste a copy in for me. Now what we can see here is we've got the Gerbil Millimeter Copy. I'm just going to rename this and call it something like five second pause, or five second pause. Now what I should highlight is the reason I've taken a copy is because I may still want the original post processor. And this is exactly what I would recommend doing. Always take a copy before you edit any of them. So we're gonna open this up again in Notepad. Now, if you're not really familiar with a post processor, it basically is telling your software how to process the code that it needs and what commands to put in in certain places. Now, as part of what we do, it will be telling it to put in a command, obviously, to start the spindle. And we need to put that pause in after the start. So when everything opens up, again, it can look a little bit confusing, but if you start to scroll down, you will see a list of start commands. Here we have start T1, start G17, and so on. And we get to the very last start command, and it says start equal S and M3. Again, the speed and the start direction command. So what we're going to do is put in an extra return after that. We're going to type start again in the same format and literally copy what is above it. But at the final step, we will put our new command in. So we've got start space equals space, and then we've got um, speech marks, and we're going to put the G4 space P5, and again, close that up with the closing quote marks. So that is now in the post processor. And when you come to export a job out, it will have that command in automatically. As I say, if for any reason you switch between machines that doesn't need that pause, then remember to use the original. That is ultimately why we copied it and gave it a different name. Now, going back to the original point I said about doing the warm up, this is exactly the same process that we would do. You would put the start command of M3S5000. Then on the next line, you would put g 4 p 120 to equal two minutes, 120 seconds. Then on the next line, you would put S10,000, same on the line after, and we keep going, just increasing that each time. So ultimately, that is, as I say, a very simple way to create a warm-up code for however long you need to make it. Now, I'm not going to show you a full 10-minute warm-up, but as a very quick example, I have done a warm-up code that goes two, four, six, eight, and 10,000 RPM with a three second delay in between each one. There it is on screen. We've loaded it into G Sender already. And what I'm gonna do is click the start job. You should hear that go up to 2,000 RPM, wait three seconds, then go to 4,000 RPM, another three seconds, 6,000, and so on. Let's test it actually works. 2,000 RPM, 4,000 RPM, 6,000 RPM, 8,000 RPM, 10,000 RPM, and it should now shut off. And it warms down, or winds down, I should say. So there you are, it really is simple. It's a little bit of coding to learn, but I say it makes your job very easy in terms of creating an automatic warm-up process. Now I know it's obviously going to make your jobs a little bit longer, but I can't stress how important those last two things are about warming up your spindle and pausing to allow it to get up to speed before you start cutting. It's ultimately, it's going to extend the life of your spindle. It's also going to help extend the life of your bits as well. And when we're spending this kind of money, we want to get the most out of them. I do hope you found this video useful. Of course, if you did, thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if not done so already. Obviously, if you have any tips and tricks for spindles and beer, 
CFD setups, do let me know in the comments section down below. Thank you all very much for watching and final thanks as always goes to my patrons. I will see you all on the next episode.